I wish you bluebirds in the spring to hear your song, a song to sing, and then a kiss more than this. I wish you love. Welcome to the Forgiveness Solution Podcast. I'm your host, Reverend Misty Time. I'm so happy you're with me today, whether you're jogging, grabbing a cup of tea, or just sitting down and taking it all in. You can find the Forgiveness Solution Podcast right here on the Sacred Stories stream. Also, don't forget to look for me, Rev Misty, at RevMisty.com. Also, you can find my book there, The Forgiveness Solution, the step-by-step process to let it go. Well, today on The Forgiveness Solution, I'm so excited. I'm honored to be speaking to Charmaine Hemp. She is just, oh, she's a lovely, lovely soul, and she's a catalyst for change. She has something called the Love Alchemy Coaching, and she also, she's in Los Angeles right now, and she loves to raise the vibration of the planet. She's a hypnotherapy birthing coach. Now, how exciting is that, helping to bring life into the world? Also, um, she's a yoga instructor, and she's also going to be an author with a couple books, and those are going to be published through Golden Brick Road Publishing. Charmaine, can you say hello to the Forgiveness Solution audience? (sighs) Hello, everybody. It's such an honor as well to be chatting today with you, Reverend Misty. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm also so very excited to be talking to you because we're going to talk about something that's so near and dear to my heart, being in the right place at the right time. One, also forgiving ourselves. And I think that you have some great advice for our listeners. Ah, I'm so excited to talk about this. Yes, uh, this began the journey of um, what I am currently writing about, neutral kinetic alchemy. And that is literally connecting to ourselves, finding divine happiness within everything we do. And it really begins with forgiving yourself. Mm, finding this hard hard thing to do yes yes but really the reason that we want to forgive ourselves is because we needed to learn those lessons in order to become who we are today and we really we we actually almost have to have these experiences There is actually no right or wrong. There is literally an experience to be had. And from our, at the time, our perspective, we're always making a decision that we think is the right thing to do. We may know that it's not necessarily the right, but we think it's the best thing to do at the time. So in retrospect, if we were to look back at this, we might have, we might come from a more expanded viewpoint. So we really want to be able to, to know that we had to have this experience in order for us to grow. So the first place to start is to look at anything that we feel regret, we feel guilt about, that we feel bad about. We want to be able to clear that within ourselves, to find this forgiveness for ourselves and to understand that we are in this classroom that we call Earth and all of us are at different levels, different grades in this Earth school and that doesn't make one person better than another. It just makes us different. We all came in with different experiences and we all came in to learn something different. So we have to go through it. We have to go through life and with that comes mistakes. Now, if we're going to hold these mistakes to to us, the rest of our lives, it's going to be difficult to find the joy in the journey. 
And when you say, you know, I love that we're going to give the forgiveness solution listeners a little bit of one, two, three type of thing because it's always so helpful. But if we're looking at our regrets and we just keep wanting to try to change what we did, and I agree with you at the time we were doing what we thought was right, whether that be right because this is what I felt that I wanted so desperately and maybe something right because of our environment or the people we were with or love, you know, we can still love someone even if it's not good for us. And so when we're looking at the regrets and we're trying to decide, yes, this is something that we were supposed to go through, how do we heal from the pain that we caused ourselves or others? Mm. We have to sit with ourselves. We have to begin taking inventory of all of the blessings in our lives, perhaps what we learned from the situation. Mm, that's now, the key. That, can I just say, yes, yes, yes. It is yes. really about what we learned. You know, when I work in workshops and I'm standing up there and somebody says, well, how do I forgive myself? And, I, and the first thing is, is, did you learn something from it? Are you planning on repeating something that hurt you or somebody else? Oh, no, not planning on repeating that. Then, then forgive yourself for, like you already said, making a mistake. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That is exactly the first place to start. So when we begin to, to see, okay, we, we made this mistake, and what did we learn from it? How did we grow? Ask yourself, will I ever make that mistake again, just like you said? And if the answer is no, then give yourself credit. Give yourself a pat on the back. Give yourself a hug and know that you've moved forward from the situation. And believe me, if you haven't decided, the universe will put that same, I call it the universe because to me, uni means one, and I think it's all connected no matter what religion you are. We're all I, sourcing I the same energy. So I'll call it the universe, but the universe will give you that same opportunity. It will plunk it right in front of your face and say, really, have you learned your lesson? Here you go again. What are you going to do this time? Okay. My Forgiveness Solution listeners have heard me say a couple times, more than a couple probably, that we're like Dorothy on the yellow brick road. We have to meet the tin man, and then we didn't learn our lesson, and then the scarecrow, and all of those things, and then flying monkeys. And then at the end of the yellow brick road, we look back and realize we had the power to, quote, go home or have the answer from the beginning. And I think you mm. said that just perfectly you know we mm -hmm. if we don't learn the lesson again universe god spirit will go here well i'll tap you a little bit harder so that you get this lesson it was a beautiful mm -hmm. example of exactly what we need to learn in self-forgiveness and i want to thank you for bringing that forward mm -hmm. yeah everything really begins with self-love so if we, can, if we can fall in love with ourselves, and the first step is forgiveness, knowing that literally we came here to learn, all our great teachers, whoever you believe in, you follow, whether it be Gandhi, Buddha, Jesus, all of those spiritual teachers, Mother Teresa, they all had a journey. They came down to earth. They all went through so much to grow and to learn here on earth. So once we understand that we're already perfect, but we're going to make mistakes, when we come back to that place of we're here to learn, we're here to have a journey, and when we grow from those mistakes, we graduate every time. So we graduate every time the lesson is again put in front of us. And this time we say, no, that's not that's not the path I'm taking this time. This time, I'm going in this direction. You have grown, mm. you know, and, and, and so that's really, that's really what we want to understand in this life is if we're here, we're here because we have something to learn. We have some growing to do. 
you know, and if we weren't here, we'd be up in, you know, in the ethers with the angels down protecting us, taking care of us, <laughs> you know, if we, if we had finished this journey. But we're here on this earth, and especially in this time, we're in this wonderful time called the golden age, you know, this cyclical time on earth where we're really expanding and, you know, uh, just even what we've been going through, our earth is shifting and growing to hold more light because we're on this earth as well to hold more light. You know, and if you're listening to this podcast, you're listening because you want to grow as well. Mm -hmm. You want to expand. You want to hold more light. You want to feel joy. And, you know, this is what Every single human being wants. They just want to feel good. Don't we, don't we, we all, all just want to feel really good, really happy, yeah. content, also content with ourselves, our others, and our, and our life. And sometimes I think, and I agree with you, it's hard to get out of our own heads. And self-love, oh, my goodness, it's hard to love yourself when you're telling yourself all these negative things about yourself all day long. Mm. So I, do, I want to continue with a few more steps to help oh, you please, really get on track. Please. Okay, so first thing is to forgive yourself. Second thing, there's a morning practice to start with, all the ways that you can begin to love yourself. First thing is gratitude, and every spiritual teacher talks about this, but this is, you know, one of the easiest, most underestimated things we can do. We can wake up in the morning and just be thankful for our breath. No matter what you believe in, be thankful for this. That your breath, breath is your best friend. It will be with you from the beginning to the very end. Mm-hmm. You know, if you can be grateful for your pillow, the bed that you slept on, knowing you had a bed to sleep on, a roof over your head. Perhaps you can hear the birds singing out the window or listen to the trees rustling or whatever it is. The more things you can find in your life to be grateful for, the more that vibration goes out into the planet, into the universe, and it just vibrates back to you. So when we can start our day like that, be sure you're going to get a phone call of somebody saying, you know, I have this really awesome job that I think might be great for you. Or I just wanted to tell you how wonderful you are today. Or, um, you know, you get in your car and there's, you know, the traffic is easy and flowing. It goes on and on like that. So conversely, you can wake up and you can say, darn, I've got such a busy day and I'm so stressed out. And the day continues like that because that's the vibration that you're sending forth. So you get in your car, traffic is messy, you can't find parking, somebody cuts you off, on and on. So we really want to get on our day on the right foot. Another thing we can do is begin to listen to our self-talk. Because we're vibrational beings, our bodies are constantly sending out messages. We're 70% or so water, and water holds the vibration. So, so we want to really begin to listen to the thoughts that our body is sending out. Perhaps you might look in the mirror and you might say, oh, you're you know, overweight and you're not taking care of yourself. So we want to shift that. We want to catch ourselves quickly. And we want to say, you know what? You're doing a great job. You're wonderful. You're beautiful. I see the sparkle in your eyes. I see the light in your eyes. Look at your hair. It's so healthy. You're doing a great job. And you continue on like this. Now, this can be a little difficult for some people because of programming, but one step at a time. One step at a time. These are just a few tools that can get us on the journey to self-love, on the journey to forgiveness. (laughs) And then we can move into trusting ourselves, trusting that we're always in the right place at the right time, talking to the right people. And then literally, as we begin to trust this process, people will start coming in 
to fulfill the desires that we've been we've been thinking about in our meditations, thinking about in our journaling, thinking about in our daily practices. So we also want to be thinking about things that we do want, not things that we don't want. So that's another easy tool. We do that you a can lot, call. don't we? We think we're talking about things that we want, but really we're talking about things we don't want. And we're doing that in our self-head talk again about t- thinking about the people that were rude to us or mean to us instead of turning that around, just like you said, being grateful for the people that are loving and kind and care for us. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I have a very excellent trick that has worked. Um, Please pass on. Uh, yeah, it's, it's every time you hear in your mind the replay of what you don't want. Oh, my husband, he's driving me crazy. I, you know, he doesn't have a job. Instead, think, wait a minute, stop yourself, Charmaine. What do you want? What do you want? And then you continually ask yourself that all day. What do I want? And then you say, I want, or want implies that you don't have it. So I like to use a more powerful word. I desire my partner to really find the position of his life, to really be happy, to love me with all his heart. He loves me with all his heart. He's amazing. And That is what I do want. And the quicker we shift into what do you want, the universe starts bringing that much quicker than when we're talking about what we don't want. So, Well, that is so true. I don't think we do that enough. I think we talk about and feel, definitely feel, all the things that are stressing us out. And we need to turn that around, flip that upside down to to putting out there what we do want or what we desire. I love that too, because it's not just want. People lots of times think when you mean want, you mean like a physical thing. When you talk about desire, you're thinking about your heart. What does your heart desire today? That is beautiful. I love to empower people to know that they have been given free will. And that with this free will, they are creating their journey. They're creating their destiny. So with this is one of the most powerful things we can do is asking ourselves, what do we want? Because then we're creating what we do want. So just I I challenge all the listeners today on on the call to really check in and, and just begin to be the silent observer of your thoughts of the words that you're speaking. You know, and even when you're sp- talking with a friend, you know, we think we're being great friends listening to our other friends complain and moan about their jobs or about their partners or about a situation they're in. Instead, I challenge you to be an excellent friend, to be the best friend you could ever be and say, wait a minute, stop. I, I... I won't sit here and listen to you create what you don't want. I want to hear what you do want. Tell me in a powerful voice what you do want. And that's a really good friend. Wow. I want to, like, emphasize that again with those exact words, just what you said. So when you hear a friend or a family member or even yourself complaining about your situation, which is probably very valid, What should we say? How do we turn that around? We say, wait, wait, wait. Tell me what you do want. And I think that is such a powerful tool. Thank you so much for that because I think I'm going to use that today with my Mm. family and with my kids and my own voice. That is just really, really beautiful. And um, thank you for giving us that that real tool that we can use today, and I know what I want. Oh, wow, that is so lovely to be able to think about it that way instead of thinking about all the stress and the things that we have to get done in our day, especially when we have families and work responsibilities. It's, it's a tough world out there for, for people just to get by and how to bring the universe in to fulfill all your real 
real desires, not just your physical needs, but your heart's desires. Oh, mm -hmm. Charmaine, that's just so beautiful. And mm -hmm. can you talk to us about some really life examples that you've seen of, of being able to use these techniques and change someone's life? Oh, every day. Every day. Um, well, I'll use an example. These are things I am creating. I am a powerful light worker. You see, I use the two most powerful words you can use to create. I am. I am leading workshops all around the world. I am a number one New York Times best-selling author. And also, you see, with this creation, with, this, with the words that I'm speaking, I'm excited. You know, if I was to say, I am a New York Times best-selling author, would you believe me or would you even care? No. Right? It's like, really? <laughs> exactly. I would be more excited. I would be more excited for you. I'd be like, really? Really? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we really want to get we really want to get excited about what we want, what we desire. So so I am a New York Times best selling author. I am leading workshops all over the world. I am able to be a beacon of light to show and shine my light for others to see their light and reflect back to me their beauty, their talents, their gifts. No one arrived here on this planet without gifts and without talents. We are all here for a divine reason. We all deserve to take up space. We all deserve to be loved so loved and that is why that is why forgiveness of the self is the most important thing because no one can love you more than you will love yourself and once we understand that you know then everything love will reflect itself to us in all sorts of ways it'll reflect us It'll reflect back to us through our jobs. We'll begin doing something that we love. You know, we're not meant to work 40 hours a week, 9 to 5, shrugging at a job that we're not happy in. We're meant to be happy. But we have a conditioning that, that some of us still believe that we have, to, we have to do this the way society has set it up. You know, and... and if we look at it from a bird's eye view, we can see it's not working. So um, from this place of self-love, from this place of really beginning to love ourselves, we begin to get opportunities of jobs that might be using our gifts and talents. We'll start reflecting in our lives a partner that will appreciate our gifts and talents and we want to share in the beauty of all the things that we love to do. And our friends, our friends will reflect the love and the light within us. And, you know, the, the gossip and the, and the rest of the things that bring us down, those things won't be in our lives anymore once we're in a place of self-love because that's not a reflection of love. So as we continue, continue on with this practice of really finding the love in our heart, even if you've never received love, even if, you know, I hear some of you saying, well, I, I didn't grow up in a, a family that showed me love. So your journey on this planet is really to find the love within your heart. Mm, to learn to love yourself and attract all that wonderful love that you might not have gotten as a child. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. You know, a lot of people talk about forgiveness as something really, really hard to do because they can't forget. They can't forget what they did or what somebody did to them. And thank you so much for talking about self-love because when you get 
the self-love and the gratitude and the trust, those wonderful points that you brought to us, that all of a sudden, at least in my opinion, you're able to stop that negative, they did this to me or I did this to somebody else and I don't know what I was thinking. I, you know, I hurt people I love. I hurt myself. I'm, because of that, I'm suffering, suffering, suffering. But thank you so much for reminding us to remember to love ourselves and that that could be part of our journey right there is just learning to love ourselves. Yes, it's a huge part of the journey. When you're working with, whether it's a client in your coaching business or helping a mom bring a beautiful life into the world, what is it that you're able to like channel in and help those people with? What brought you to such wonderful self-love and self-forgiveness that you're able to help so many? Hmm. Well, <laughs> um, it, it was quite a journey to get to where I am today. And, um, and I, you know, I think that, um, I had to, uh, I had to go through the journey as, as many do, and I am very grateful for it. And, and I have, I work with the angels. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I didn't, I, I always knew they were with me and people can People that are clairvoyant, they can see them all around me. And um, in one of the biggest things about my journey was that I always was in a place of love. But what I didn't, ha- what I had to learn was that, um, that the bad stuff in me is okay too. The good, the bad, the ugly. We all have the size of ourselves. And the thing is, for so long, I would push down anything that was negative, anything that was, you know, mean, I would push it down to deep because I didn't want it to be part of me because I just wanted to be this bubbly, happy, um, loving being. You know, one of my exes called me Ned Flanders because I was always seeing the, you know, the happy side of life. But um, through the process of life, I, I had to really sit with the, the not so pretty sides of myself, you know, the angry sides of the unfairness and, you know, uh, some of the choices that I've made and, and, um, and, and, and go through this forgiveness so that I can now teach it. I can now teach what it is to feel this joy in doing what I love, you know, creating this space for people to heal, for people to grow, for people to, to find the, their partners, to, to take, also to take birthing back, to, to back to where it used to be, um, you know, even when, if you want to look at how Jesus was born, um, you know, in a stable, just without uh, all the medical stuff around, you know, it was, it was just a, a woman as a, in nature, doing what the body does naturally, you know, and um, just literally coming back to a space of, of we're always doing the best we can with the tools that we have. And as long as we have a willingness to learn and grow, we will. We will. And if that's the only place you can start is asking yourself, please give me the tools to help me forgive myself and forgive others. Those tools are already on their way to you. They're already right there with you. All you need to do is receive them. They'll come to you in the form of a friend. They'll come to you as you're searching the Internet. They'll come to you in a book that somebody hands you. 
They'll come to you in your dreams in a whisper, and they'll set you on the journey of healing yourself. And they may even come in this beautiful podcast that you're able to provide people with some tools right now. So yes, we might have only had the tools we had, but you're right. If you're open to learning and asking for more tools, they will show up for you. And Charmaine, you have been able to give us such amazing tools and tools I'm going to use to remember, because sometimes we all need to remember, right? We forget, even as Mm -hmm. learners and teachers who've been doing it for a while, that we need to remember, don't let the stress get to you. Think about gratitude. Begin to listen to ourselves. And then we can trust ourselves that we're in the right place at the right time, that we're here exactly for a beautiful reason and to trust that. I can't thank you enough for offering me and the listeners such an amazing set of reminders to help that self-love, that forgiveness, learning our lessons, and having a better, happier, glorious life. And wow, Charmaine, thank you so much for all that you've done for others, for yourself, for your journey, and then also for what you're going to do, because it's going to be fabulous. It's going to be miraculous. It's going to be amazing. Oh, thank you so much, Reverend Missy. I really appreciate it. There's so much more I'd love to share. I could talk for hours, um, but I so appreciate everybody that's been listening today. My heart is extended out to you. My ray of light is touching all of those listeners and all of those people that really want to feel this divine forgiveness in their heart. And, And it's okay if you find this really hard. I challenge you to just sit with it and accept accept what's in your heart. Accept how you feel. We don't have to push it down anymore. You're right to feel how you do. And just understand that everybody has their journey. And we're all we're all getting exactly what we need to learn in this lifetime. So thank you so much. Also, if somebody wants to work with you and find you, how would they do that? Um, There's a a few ways. Uh, My birthing website is meditationalbirth.com, and I am a hypnobirthing coach and a doula in the Los Angeles area. And in terms of love alchemy coaching, um, you can find me at Charmaine hemp at gmail.com that's c-h-a-r-m-a-i-n-e-h-a-m-p at gmail.com and you can also follow me on instagram at sunshine charmaine well sunshine charmaine i know i will be following you and i'll also put your information in the podcast information so people can find you and i want to just say thank you for reminding us that we need self-love and that forgiveness that we can forgive ourselves for our past i don't i want to use the word mistakes but our past our path, whatever it is, by learning the lessons from that, that we're in a classroom. I love that. I always say that God gave best students the hardest lessons. And, you know, you might be just the best student. And I want to thank you so much for that. And um, also I want to remind everybody that they can find me, Rev Misty, right here at Sacred Stories. You can get my book on Sacred Stories. Also Amazon and Barnes and Noble at all where all major books are sold. I love to talk about forgiveness and the power and the tools, just like Charmaine mentioned, that we gain more tools and forgiveness is one of those tools. And you can also follow me on Instagram at Rev underscore Misty and also on Facebook. I have a great group there that we you know back and forth about forgiveness and different situations. So please pop in to Facebook and follow Reverend Misty Time. And until we talk again, and thank you so much. I wish you bluebirds in the spring to hear your song, a song to sing. And then a kiss 
more than this i wish you love